G'day. In the previous lesson, we just learned something astounding. That a general quadratic, some y equals x squared curve, maybe with some steepness, plus a straight line curve, is going to produce another perfectly symmetrical u-shaped graph. That's astounding. In fact, we proved this is just a formula y equals x squared messed around with. It's basically x, maybe with some stuff going on, squared, with some, adding some more stuff messed around with. In fact, if I was to expand this out and get x squared plus all these other stuff, I'd see I actually need a x squared. So I can tell you that the number in front here is that same a. So actually, this steepness factor a is present throughout. I can, I can check the steep, steepness either way. All right. So that's going to make our graphing of quadratics in general very easy. We now know they're always going to be symmetrical u-shaped graphs. And let me explain why I mean that's what, what's going to make that easy. Let's do an example. Let's look at, say, y equals 2. I'll be very nice to us at first. I'll be nice to us throughout. Plus 7. Suppose we're asked to sketch a graph of y equals x minus 3 times x plus 5 times 2 plus 7. Now, if I were to expand this out, and this actually looks very strange in what form this is. I mean, the curriculum has all these different names for different forms of quadratics. In the end, if I did expand it out, it would look something like that. So that really is a quadratic. And here's my, my reasoning. If ever I've got a quadratic graph, I know it's going to be a symmetrical U-shaped graph. If ever I find two symmetrical points, like uh, two x values that get the same output, I'm basically done. But common sense there's going to be some U-shaped graph that's symmetrical between those two symmetrical points. I can use common sense to figure out how to graph things like this. All I need to do is figure out two interesting x values that give me symmetrical locations. And when I look at this particular example, there are two x values that are staring me in the face. I can't help but think putting in x equals 3. And when I put in x equals 3, what do I get? I get y equals 2 times 0, or well, that's a 0 plus 7, I get y equals 7. And x equals negative 5 is clearly interesting in this formula. Putting in x equals negative 5 gives me y equals 0 plus 7. So actually I'm in this position right here, or oh, x is negative 5, excuse me, almost this position. At x equals 3, I get 7. At x equals negative 5, I get 7. Okay, I can see if I expand, it's going to be 2x squared stuff. So I know it's a fairly steep graph that's upward facing, symmetrical about these two points. Now my question is, where's, uh, where's the middle point? Where's the, uh, that vertex going to be? Well, it's going to be halfway between negative 5 and 3, if I use my common sense. And what's halfway between those? I guess it's negative 1. Beautiful. So I know the vertex is somewhere at negative 1. Now the trouble is I don't know if the graph is high up like this, maybe it comes down and just touches the graph, or maybe it comes down and swoops below the x-axis. I know it goes through those two points, I've kind of messed up my picture here. Oh dear, how can I work out how high it is at the vertex? I'm just going to use my common sense. I want to know what value it is at x equals negative 1. Let's just put in x equals negative 1. When x is negative 1, I see that y is 2 times negative 1 is negative 4 times negative 1 is 4 plus 7. That's uh, negative 16 plus 7 is negative 9. So actually, my graph is, I think I need a bit of color now, at negative 9, at x equals negative 1, y is negative 9. It goes through the points 7 at x equals negative 5 and 3. I have no choice but to sketch a U-shaped graph like that. Beautiful. So if I ever see two symmetrical, interesting x values, common sense will lead me all the way through graphing the thing. Now, I chose an example that was like kind of obvious which x values to stare at. I saw some nice stuff going on here. That 7 was kind of incidental. The nice stuff really sort of same in the face. So let me do another example right now. Let's see if I have enough room on the board. Probably don't, but let's, let's see what happens. y equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 5. Suppose I was asked to give a pretty decent quick sketch of that. All right. Now, there's no obvious x value staring me in the face right now. I'll just change my pen, excuse me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to want to look for interesting x values. So let me just focus on the x part of this formula. Like here, that plus 7 was kind of un, 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 incidental. This is a plus 5. We know plus 5 is going to just shift the graphs up and down. Let me just focus on the, on the x part of this graph. And I'm just going to ask myself, what can I do? Well, the only thing I can think to do with that x stuff is basically uh, maybe factor out stuff. Like I can see a common factor of 2 and a common factor of x. So let me rewrite this as 2x times x plus 4 plus 5. And look, when I do that, there are now two interesting x values staring me in the face. When x is 0, I get y equals 0 plus 5. And when x is, what, negative 4? I get that y is 0 plus 5. 0 and negative 4, interesting x values. So I know when x is 0, and when, whoops, when x is 0 and when x is negative 4, 
this graph has value, did I write negative 5 there? Silly me, has value 5. It's 5 high here, it's 5 high there. So I know it's going to be what? Steepness of 2. That's the steepness of 2. It's going to be a fairly steep U shaped graph going through these two symmetrical points. Uh, I guess the middle point must be happening at negative 2. I don't know if it's just above the axis or on the axis or below the axis. And how do I find out? Let's just shove in x equals negative 2. I can either put in the blue equation or the yellow equation. I'll put in the yellow equation. It looks a bit friendlier to me. When x is negative 2, I get that y is negative 4 times uh, 2 uh, plus 5. So what's that, negative 1? Knowing me, I probably got my arithmetic wrong. Probably not. Anyhow, but here goes. It must be a symmetrical U-shaped graph looking something like that. And depending how fussy a curriculum you have, you might want to label your axes very carefully and draw proper things to scale and all the rest. To me, that's a fine sketch. It's got all the key information labeled on it. It's a bit messy. I've drawn it over other pictures. That's bad of me. But there it is. I am able to sketch graphs just by looking for interesting x values of the symmetrical. And once I've got symmetry, it's always my friend. Common sense will just let me work my way through it. Now this video is just a quick overview of the text. Your job now is to work through the text of this lesson, check your answers and so forth, lots of practice there. But this, this idea of just going for symmetry is just pure beauty. Have fun with it. Thanks.